the secret shadowy group of individuals that are just using him like the lifeless flesh puppet that he is in order to push back to push in and to institute their larger build back better great reset agenda Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. My name is Zerkadowski here of wearechange.org in South Beach, Miami, Florida, where in this particular video, I will be talking about how I do not believe that there actually will be a 2024 presidential election as I walk alongside here Ocean Drive, a very iconic, a very famous place, as I'm able to, of course, freely express myself and just kind of go through a train of consciousness that uh, I, I can't really do when I'm just sitting down there. So doing these videos has been really helpful to me as of course the, the topic of the presidential elections coming up is a very controversial one. And one that of course brings up a lot of different theories, a lot of different ideas of what could potentially be happening. But um, in, in May of this year, I went on my YouTube channel and I specifically expressed the larger idea that we're headed towards such tumultuous times that there won't even be a presidential election in this current uh, presidential election cycle. Then, of course, I did extensive video about this, explaining this in great detail on LukeUnfiltered.com. And uh, after that, we saw Colonel McGregor, we saw individuals like Roseanne Barr and other prominent individuals come out and also, after I said it, say it as well. Now, this wasn't, of course, an original idea from me. This was an idea that one of my friends had. And when I was talking to him, he uh, just casually said, hey man, like, th th there probably won't be a presidential election. And automatically, when I kind of heard that, I'm like, no, that's kind of absurd. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of, you know, just, just totally out of the ordinary, especially when it comes to American politics. But that night, I kind of contemplated on it. I, I, I thought about it and I really just uh, went to sleep, woke up. And then as soon as I woke up, I was like, holy freaking cow, there probably won't be a presidential election in 2024. And I wanted to explain that train of thinking because since May, since coming out and making extensive videos about this particular topic, I have only been more convinced of that idea as I've said in that video, that video on LukeUnfiltered.com specifically, that all the ingredients that are creating this situation, they're, they're not being subtracted from the recipe that we're all kind of seeing unfold right now. There's only more negative ingredients being added to this larger pot that we're all involved in that there's no getting out of that's getting extremely freaking hot. And it's getting very inconvenient and it's getting very uncomfortable. And surprise, surprise, um, it's probably gonna get a lot more inconvenient. It's probably gonna get a lot more uncomfortable from here as of course, the larger political landscape of what's happening right now is perplexing, but I think worth thinking about and contemplating in many different ways. Specifically when it comes to what's happening right now with Joe Biden. Joe Biden, as we know, uh, a flesh shoot of the establishment of the powers that be of essentially the secret shadowy group of individuals that are just using him like the lifeless flesh puppet that he is in order to push back to push in and to institute their larger build back better great reset agenda that of course everyone's paying for so severely especially the american middle class the american lower class only the big kind of mafioso special interest banking corporate class is really just getting away with a lot while everyone else is just being absolutely railroaded screwed and robbed of not only their rights but also their monetary uh, financial future and w when we look at how joe biden became president of the united states there he he came there predominantly because of all the support that he had from the corporate media the corporate media that even according to the mainline studies out there highlight how they essentially put him in there by censoring the hunter biden story from the general public which we know would have had an effect on the election and which such close margins within the last elections probably would have cost him his election if they actually would have reported on him accurately the corporate media during the last presidential election cycle did two very important things that we should kind of look back in hindsight almost four years ago and that is the fact that they not only pushed racial tensions and divide and civil unrest inside of the United States very effectively, by the way, 
I, I know a lot of people like to talk about the horror stream media and the prostitutes and the dying dinosaurs and they have no relevance and, and they suck and they're not good and uh, oh, we got a we got a Cuban stuck with us here. Pardon me, uh, but but when we look at how uh, effectively they psyops a lot of people during the the peaceful BLM riots that, uh, as we know, so many people <laughs> went through. As 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 we've seen that and another thing that they were doing during that time is also specifically campaigning for Joe Biden when he was in his basement. Joe Biden, during the last presidential election cycle, barely came out, was in his basement, doing these horrible Zoom calls with crappy internet, not having any kind of resonating message, and the corporate media was able to galvanize everyone against the larger messages against Donald Trump, and convincingly do so, to the point where they openly just censored critical stories of, of Joe Biden. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up right now with my larger kind of thesis and analysis and speculation of what I'm seeing right now is because the corporate media is not really doing that now. If you look at what's particularly happening with, um, if you, excuse me, let me just make sure this, this guy's like standing in my way there. If you look at what the corporate media is doing right now, they are talking about Hunter Biden. They are talking about the emails, the, the Burisma deals, the deals with China, the deals with Russia, a lot of that is being exposed when previously it was hid underneath the rug because it had a big detrimental effect on the elections. Now, why is the corporate media right now shifting kind of tunes and addressing Joe Biden and, and actually calling him out for all the corrupted, horrible things that he's doing? Why are they doing that now? Well, according to Joe Rogan, and this is something that I espoused also a couple months as well, I, I think it predominantly has a lot to do with the fact that there could be establishment pressures and ties to try to kick him out of political office because how in the world is this man under this economy going to win? Usually uh, during presidential elections, the current regime, the current power structure in charge props up the u.s economy and then after the elections the economy is always kind of expected to go go down not always but but predominantly that's that's usually the case here now the economy right now is you could kind of i mean miami beach is is an exception but when, when you look at the grocery store when when, when you look at the local markets when, when you look at the cost of living and and rent and food and utilities and everything else going up around you, I think it's fair to say we also don't have that good of economy. The, the Build Back Better Inflation Reduction Act that essentially just took all of your money and shoved it into the special interest's hands, which Joe Biden did, which by the way, Trump did that as well during the COVID relief aid and all this other packages stuff. A lot of multinational corporations are very happy with his presidency, but I'm going to get to him in just a little bit. But you look at what's happening right now it's absolutely unusual as of course I, I think there's a bigger probability and a chance that uh, Joe Biden at his very very old age as even the normies are wondering no freaking way could handle the political pressures that he is facing right now and still somehow come out triumphant against whatever candidate is going to be standing in front of him, whoever the establishment engineers to run up against him. As of right now, it looks like that will be Donald Trump. But there are a lot of very powerful establishment individuals putting out all the pressure, putting out all the stops, trying to arrest him, trying to put him in jail. And the former president of the United States facing nearly 600 to 700 years in jail is just absolutely absurd it's absolutely ridiculous and something that is essentially a crossing the rubicon moment which is extremely dangerous for our current state of affairs predominantly because he they, they, they jumped the shark in, in such a way where now donald trump his lawyers his advisors are literally being freaking tried for questioning the previous election, which of course, many prominent US politicians always have a history of, of doing this. You look at Hillary Clinton, 
You look at Stacey Abrams, you look at Al Gore, all of them questioned previous elections. You look at, you look at all the other presidents that committed all the horrible illegal actions. They never were, were, were tried. You look at all the politicians that, of course, didn't keep good records themselves. They were never tried and, and, and prosecuted and charged and indicted. So what's really going on here with Donald Trump, which leads me to my own kind of form of speculation. Um, and, that, and that's because before the indictments, we got to understand Trump's political future didn't look that bright. We got to understand that he had an okay midterm, but by and large, even a lot of other mainline kind of commentators like Tim Pool, where public is saying, hey, I'm not impressed with Donald Trump since he's running only on the single issue of what happened in 2020, and he's not running on other current issues that a lot of people cared about. A lot of issues that were grassroots issues, a lot of issues that were middle class issues, a lot of issues that, of course, could have represented the people in a better way, especially in a place like Pennsylvania, where Dr. Oz, a TV reality star, got favorites over a more populist kind of candidate that, in, in my opinion, was, was way better suited for uh, the role of that specific, uh, of that specific political office than, of course, Dr. Oz. So coming out of that kind of midterm performance, another thing happened that was very interesting, and that was Donald Trump essentially telling people, oh, yeah, you know, you, should, you guys should get the, the Trump scene. You guys should get one, two, three, four shots which, of course, alienated his base and made everyone kind of look around saying, hey, are, are we really going to be running with this guy for, for, for the main presidential uh, candidacy under the Republican ticket? Is he really going to be our main guy? Until the indictments started coming in, and when the indictments started coming in, what happened? Well, his popularity rose. He got a lot of support. And whether it's somehow done deliberately or whether it's done... Uh, in, in a larger conspiracy kind of minded way. I, I think contemplating on these indictments and the larger kind of results of them is worth pondering and thinking about and at least speculating the idea. Now, I'm not saying it's true. This is all just pure speculation. But if you look at the, 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 the way that they're treating Trump, right, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, as a, as a commentator did, during his administration, whenever Donald Trump did anything good, I, I, I said he did something good when I thought he did something good. Look at that little terrorist. The little, ter the little dog's always the, the biggest terrorist of them all. When he did something bad, like, you know, lock people down, criticize Sweden, criticize Thomas Macy for not wanting to lock down for 14, 15 days, whatever it was, I, I called him out and said, hey, you know, these are bad policies that affect the American middle class in a very negative way, as, of course, Walmart was allowed to be open, and you're just allowing Dr. Fauci to kind of run the house here and do whatever the hell he wants, as, of course, he has his fingerprints tied through, through the Patriot Act, through bioweapons research and warfare that has been done in this country for many years now, which, again, should, should make a lot of people kind of really wonder, holy cow, this guy's very powerful, very connected. Uh, definitely, definitely recommend reading the book, The Real Anthony Fauci by uh, RFK Jr. Um, but but what, what's happening to Donald Trump is outrageous. It's insane. It, it's crazy. And he is absolutely being politically prosecuted because he represents a larger threat to the establishment. The establishment isn't run by Joe Biden. That right there, again, the guy could barely string along sentences. You think he could pull off a larger conspiracy? There's a conspiracy unfolding right now that a lot of people don't really even really realize, and that is the conspiracy to deny a presidential candidate the opportunity to be president of the United States. As of course, these latest charges in Georgia, according to some legal experts, make it so he can't even pardon himself, even if he would potentially become president of the United States. Now, these are some, these, these are some things that legal scholars are arguing right now. Of course, that, that doesn't always make it true. Uh, but we, we got to understand, there, there's been other politicians that have literally killed people. Politicians used to duel. They used to shoot each other. And then they used to go back in, in the seats of house, in, 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 in the House, in the Senate, and they literally would be like, okay, yeah, we're going to keep on uh, voting here after shooting someone and murdering them. 
uh, Barack Obama, the former president of the United States, as I call him, Barack Obama, uh, uh, drone bomber, murdered a 16-year-old American citizen outside of the legal U.S. judicial system. He murdered seven, eight Americans. Who really knows? Donald Trump came into office, by the way, made sure that those records would be kept away from the general public. Barack Obama made them public, and Barack Obama murdered American citizens uh, without a judge, jury, or executioner. There's been so much crime. There's been so much illegal activities done by politicians that have sold this out to Big Pharma, that have sold this out to the military industrial complex, that have sold this out to the big bankers, that have sold this out to Jeffrey, Mr. You-Know-Who, and sold your children out, and of course, used your tax dollars to run an international trafficking, child extortion, and you-know-what operation. So excuse me if I'm a little bit skeptical of all sides of the party here connected to this larger issue, as of course, the establishment now currently represented by the skin suit of Joe Biden. No freaking way they're going to allow Joe Biden to become president of the United States. No way. I don't, the American people won't have it. No freaking way are they going to allow Donald Trump to become the next president of the United States. They're throwing everything they can on him, whether it's maybe a deliberate, on purpose way of, of promoting him, because you also do have to speculate to the point where we're at right now in our political kind of discourse where you kind of got to wonder, that maybe the establishment knows that if the establishment attacks someone, they actually prop them up and put them in the position that they actually want. Is that what's happening with Donald Trump here? I don't know. I don't claim to know. Um, I'm, I'm just speculating on this as, I'm co or as, of course, I'm just walking here and my, my, my train of consciousness is just kind of flowing here, trying to think about all the other possibilities of, of how to explain all this because Joe Biden's not going to be it. They're doing everything in their power to make sure Donald Trump's not going to be it. 600, 700 years in jail. They're making sure he's not going to be it. So, so who, who, who is it? Who is it going to be? Um, and that's, that's one reason I legitimately think there won't be a presidential election because you look at the two most common scenarios right now, they don't look plausible. Who else is there? Ron DeSantis, Gavin Newsom? Yeah, they, they all talked about doing like another little terrorist. All these little terrorists are over here trying to bark at Atlas. Atlas is a cute, cool as a cucumber. She doesn't, she, she doesn't start no ish. She just finishes it. Right, Atlas? I don't know if you guys could see her. Can you guys see her? Wait, no, okay, there you go. There I am. Uh, where was I? All these little dogs, all these little people get, they don't raise right because they're absolutely irresponsible. They just run around everywhere. They're the ones, they're the pets. The human beings are the pets. The little dogs, they're the masters. They're the owners of, of the irresponsible human beings who just got dogs that don't know how to raise them. Anyway, uh, that's, another, that's another lecture for uh, another time here. It's not gonna be Trump. It's not gonna be Biden. Who else is gonna be? Gavin? Santis? Now there are there's a lot of Wall Street money moving into DeSantis, but those two guys can't even agree to terms about how the debate would happen. And even just about the general prospects of this, that American people are like, wait, 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 hold on here. Hold on, this doesn't make any sense at all. So with the way things are going, I, I, I do think we're reaching a point where the establishment could be like, screw it, we're just gonna. We're just gonna do something crazy. We're just gonna do something drastic to the point where uh, there won't be an election. And I think the probability of that is increasing. And I think it's only gonna be increasing from here from my own personal perspective and my own personal opinion. I could be absolutely wrong. This was just, again, from a friend that, that brought this up to me. I started talking about it. I started thinking about it. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty likely. Now, there's some other conspiracy talk right now by other influencers talking about how they're going to release another uh, virus out there and then do the whole thing all over again. That's a possibility. But uh, even, even let's say if, if, uh, if it's going to be Joe Biden, right? It can't be Kamala. Newsom? I don't think it could even be Newsom. I, I think the, the, the established right now, right now is trying to put pressure on, on Biden, but itself doesn't really know what it's going to do here. Uh, and I think this is why the, the possibility of an October surprise, the possibility of something really going haywire is, is, is really capable and possible here. And that's why I think there's a larger possibility of them just saying, screw it, uh, natural disaster, uh, you know, human disaster, infrastructure attack. And uh, no, we can't have an election because we don't know what the hell's going on here. Or hey, release another virus. 
And uh, if they do that, let's just say Trump becomes president. Well, you know, what happened when the first five was, was, was released when Trump was president? It, it, it didn't look like, a, you know, it, it's not good policies that he has, that he never repented of. And uh, that, that's one of the things that I think is also probable here as, of course, the, the powers that be, the establishment, in my opinion, knowingly released a sickness to the general public and uh, they were never held uh, responsible for doing so. They were never um, caught. They got away with it. They got a huge, a huge bunch of, a huge amount of power and authority, uh, a huge amount of influence, huge amounts of destruction of civil liberties and invasion into our lifestyles that of course they were testing all the latest and greatest technological advancements on that they had done with Amazon and Bezos and of course the larger police state that they've been building and encroaching all around us with the bars with us not noticing for many years now. So um, if, if they got away with it the first time, there's a bigger probability that they could do it a second time. Screw it. Release another bioweapon and then uh, we're going to have more mail-in votings and then uh, you know, they'll just put Biden in there for one more time and, and maybe they can pull it off that way. Um, but things are getting very drastic, especially with the establishment, especially with the intelligence agencies, especially with the Biden administration, uh, especially with the Democrats that are looking more and more desperate by the day to try to stop something. And the more they try to stop it, the more popular they make it. And the more popular they make it, the more unstoppable this situation becomes because then there's another possibility that my mind kind of takes me to is that Donald Trump becomes president of the United States. All the powerful people have to do is, oh, release another sickness. Trump, let's get another Trump scene out there. It'll be the hero again. That's another possibility. Or, hey, Trump's in power. Now comes the real power grab by the federal government. Now we're arresting everybody back in response to all of this. Now there's a conflict and potential civil war-like scenario, which again, should be avoided at every possible way because the, 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 the political pendulum is swinging back and forth very violently and it's affecting more and more innocent human beings. It's screwing more and more people over. It's alienating, isolating and radicalizing so many individuals and with, with the way that things are moving forward, it's not moving in a way that gives me a lot of confidence uh, for this upcoming presidential election, which I think I think there's going to be an October surprise. I think they're going to stop Donald Trump. I think they might might just try to force down Biden just for the foreseeable time or Biden 2.0 or 3.0 or whatever kind of weird robotic version they probably have of him. And then like, okay, now we're back in charge here. And uh, yep, here we go again. Just like that GTA meme. Here we go again. Yeah, I just released another sickness and checkmate, essentially. So, the, the, just looking at all these scenarios, kind of playing them out throughout my head. There's another, you know, another scenario. Trump becomes president, fights all these charges, just says, hell no. But then also there's a big probability of things erupting and going crazy from there too. So, God willing, we have an election, everyone's vote is counted, and more importantly, things stay civil and calm. But that's just wishful thinking. Will it actually happen? Well, Atlas, probably freaking not, right? That's just my two cents, that's just my perspective. A lot of this is just my speculation. Hold on, I don't think you guys could see her because the camera. Let me try to move this camera, where is this? All right, let me try to move this. Have you guys ever even... Hold on. Still trying to get used. There we go. There we go. Atlas, sit. Sit. Good job. Now, that was a long walk. That was a lot of crazy terrorists, little dogs out there, right? They're responsible dog owners. Don't know how to walk their dogs. I'm going to leave you here <laughs> with Atlas. And uh, I'm going to leave you here pontificating. What's going to happen if there's not an election? Let me know down in the comment section below. Because all the ingredients that are creating civil unrest and civil chaos, they're only increasing. And with the more they, the likelihood of their increase, the more they increase every single day, the more 
I, I just don't see things working out politically for the American people and something drastically happening to the point where people might vote, but the votes might not be coming in and there might not be any results and there might be a lot of chaos and there might be a lot of division and probably a lot of it is orchestrated and organized as a way to gain more power money control over you so no matter what happens no matter what the next psyop will be do your own homework do your own research don't fall for it be a strong person of strong mind of strong body of strong will and don't fall for their larger larger psychological warfare that they're going to have against you i love you guys stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org. A lot more coming to you here on this independent media broadcast.